Okay, welcome back. Well, let's see if uh, this uh, success story can lift our spirits a bit. The Federal Inland Revenue Service has said that it generated over 10 10 trillion, in fact, 10.1 trillion Naira as tax revenue in the preceding year 2022, and that's the highest tax collection ever recorded in the agency's history. And it's been said that the agency achieved over 96% of its collection target for the year. Is this a testament of improved processes? Or is it coincidence? We're having Manuel Onasami, the lead partner with Cardinal Professional Services, joining us in the studio. Uh, good morning, Mr. Elisami. Thank you so much for good your morning, time. Uh, for sh me. Should we say congratulations uh, to the FIRS? Or is just is this a coincidence? What well, happened last year? Well, con congratulations will be in order. You know, leaping from 6.4 trillion to 10.1 trillion is is actually a leap. You know, from the oil revenue, you know, they were able to almost double, you know, the income from that hand and also from the non-oil, you know, uh, receipt, you know, they were able to add about additional two trillion, you know. So it's in order to say congratulations to the FRS for this, you know, but not to say, you know, the work I had is still is still much because if you place this, you know, as a ratio of our GDP, you know, it's still a way, way far less from what is expected from a, a nation that really wants to survive from their tax route. So how would we say this was achieved? Was it that the tax net has been expanded, as we always say, or was it uh, less compromise in the system? Or what really drove this increase? Okay, so if you look at the numbers very uh, critically, you know, if you look at the oil, you know, last year, they did about 2.004 trillion and this year about 4.009 you know so oil receipts that could be a testament to the fact that the oil industry has a bit stable you know the prices has been going up that means players in the industry are uh, performance also must have improved to the end that it can pay more taxes you know and if you look at uh, the non-oil uh, receipt that's where you can also now say you know the tax man number one from the uh, uh from the use of technology number one they introduced the uh, technology for compliance and then uh, tax collection the tax promise like we, we typically know that has been able to help them to eliminate some discretion around uh, compliance you know the system is now automatic when you put in your figures you know your amount you know your penalty and you then pay that makes collection much more easier from the compliance act and kudos to the frs also you know uh, they have been painstakingly participating in the process of improving the tax environment you know, uh, year on year, we have been publishing the Finance Act, you know, where some laws are changed, you know, some tax rates are changed, you know, the VAT sometimes increased from 5% to 7%, you know, in the proposal we have on the ground, we're trying to push tertiary education, you know, a bit up. You know, those are the kind of factors that must have also uh, painstakingly, you know, uh, helped the FRS to achieve this in increment. And if you also look at it also, FRS has been more coordinated in their approach with uh, looking at existing taxpayers to see whether what you have actually paid in your taxes are right in the process of tax audit exercise. Well, while some people may think that their approach may be deemed aggressive, you know, but that also may have uh, contributed uh, significantly to, to, to the, the contribution. So from the perspective of the FRS, you know, they have paid a bit of uh, their cost of ensuring that this number goes up. But we need to balance things also from the perspective of the taxpayer. You know, and uh, one of the biggest things I want to put on the table is the fact that uh, somebody needs to be watching the fact that our FDI inflow has consistently declined since 2019 up to now. That means that, uh, you know, there must be something that the government needs to pay attention to because your tax climate is the biggest contributor to your ta uh, FDI inflow in your country. And what we have seen from experience, you know, when the, the taxpayers keep, uh, the tax authority keeps going back to the existing taxpayer, you know, and uh, there are a lot of data that we have been gathering in this country that shows that we still have larger percentage of people that are yet in the tax nest. But if you keep frustrating in that sense, in quote, because that is the perception of the taxpayer, you know, you know, you see a situation where the tax law is not clear on the matter, but the FRS is a bit aggressive and the body language to the global community is like, oh, 
the tax environment in Nigeria is unpredictable. Year on year, they keep changing the gospels. Also, if you look at the issue of finance act, you know, the finance, FRS has been changing a lot of things in the tax environment that then makes the tax climate also unpredictable by global investors. Yeah, I, I, I was going. I was going to make us stay a bit on that finance act because yeah. it is a major one. Yeah. Um, we, we had a lot of uh, opinion perspective, and. Um, there's hardly anyone that's applauding some of those adjustments being done to it because currently I think uh, uh, businesses have to pay about 30% of their profits as tax. <laughs> you know, and by the time you have this new adjustment, what is left, and we're talking of inflation, we're talking of, you know, the pressure coming from running your businesses and, you know, all of that. And then when you not add this new, I mean, I think it's a good thing that the, the, the president hasn't assented to it, but we don't know what adjustment is going to be done to it because we had business people really complain about those adjustments and additions, especially that have been brought into, into that finance act. Yeah, you're correct. You know, uh, you know let me just say that uh, the idea of a finance act is not wrong you understand and yes attack will come so the idea of the finance act is that you have your appropriation act every year and then tax is a major contributor to your fiscal policy isn't it so your finance act is expected to look at your appropriation act and what you need to adjust within your system you know in order to be able to achieve the goal for the year you understand but what we've seen in more developed climb is that so that the tax environment can be predictable by investors you know you don't on an annual basis change tax rates you don't change, you don't increase, decrease tax rate, but you rather make the process of compliance more efficient and the process of getting more people into the tax net more efficient such that people that are evading tax can now come into the tax net. But what we've seen, uh, the behavior we've seen with uh, the Nigerian government with the use of the finance that kind of predict that anytime the government needs additional ca uh, cash, you just go the route of increasing the tax rate, you know, or introducing additional tax, which then makes the environment it looks like, oh, the ta government is using the Tax uh, Finance Act as a purpose of just getting more revenue from the existing uh, uh, taxpayer instead of painstakingly putting process in place and ensuring that we widen the tax net and get more people to comply with taxes in Nigeria. So if we have this 10.1 trillion era from 2022, uh, what do you see in 2023 and Will it reduce the borrowing? Because currently we have a 11.04 trillion era as deficit for the budget would you see it decreasing you know some of those borrowings especially now that moody's is <laughs> yeah it's it's anybody that becomes the sheriff that becomes the sheriff eventually will, definitely has a very critical job you know to do you know moody's just downgraded our uh, our credit rating as a nation that means the cost of borrowing will go higher if at all you are able to get, <laughs> you understand? And uh, that means that government has to look inward. Inward. And uh, looking inward is not to say you go after those people that have been putting all the effort to comply, just frustrating them. We've seen situations where people are experiencing multiple tax audits at the same time at the expense of doing the business. We have enough data that the next phase of administration in Nigeria, based on my perspective, is that we need to do a bit of data mining and see those people that are not complying with us so that they can start complying, starting from the leadership, starting from the political class. In this election, we've not seen the tax authority ask the politicians about their tax receipts. You understand what I'm trying to say? So these are potential areas of tax leakage that we can potentially bring into the net and more other people around the politicians that are not paying taxes and more businesses around the government that are also not paying taxes. So this current administration that will come in has a lot of job to doing the business of widening the tax nets rather than frustrating the existing business out of Nigeria because we need the FDI to keep coming in. And another conversation that goes on around taxes, what is it being used for? Do I feel the impact? Even as a business, you still have to provide your electricity, your water, your road and infrastructure. So why should I go through the trouble of even paying so much tax? Why don't I look for a way to cut corner and pay less so I can use the money and take care of those needs? <laughs> you know, uh, while it may sound justified, you know, because of the reality on ground, you know, the position of the law is still the position of the law. 
you know, if you are expected to pay the tax, then you have to do the right thing as the as a good citizen of the nation to pay the right. And what one thing we can do as citizens is to also be more interested in the system, engage the government, act, act for accountability, you know, in the in the uh, what we use our tax for. Sadly, in Nigeria, our current you know, our current tax receipt is not even enough to service our recurrent debts, not to even talk about recurrent expenditures, talking about the, uh, the civil service, you know, that is already bloated up, you know, and most of the infrastructural development we've seen have been done through the instrument of debt by the government, you know, and that's why it sees then become, it has become very, very imminent, you know, on the uh, anybody that gets there to ensure that we, we increase our tax earnings going yeah, and another conversation around that is the tax waiver last year it amounted to 1.8 trillion, trillion. Yep. Uh, imagine adding that to the 10.1 trillion so you're talking about almost about 20 to 12 trillion but uh, of course the tax waivers are supposed to also come with some advantages and benefits to the economy i i, I guess it's now left for the government to find a way to balance waiving tax and, and still getting the tax that they Yeah, need. so in, 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 in currently, you know, the tax waivers we have around are expected are ordinarily tied to some uh, economic development program, you understand? So, for example, your pioneer status incentive, you know, you are bringing in technology, you are opening up a new industry, and then they give you that waiver. You know, the, but the challenge is that uh, are we tracking the results? You know, you've been giving waiver for so long, and you are not seeing the impact. Are you not expected to review it and still see whether this is still a viable waiver to continue to give? You know, those are also the areas that the government and the tax authority need to continue to evaluate and say, okay, we have so 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 waivers on ground. How impactful has they been? Have they been over the years? And do we need to cut down on some or relook uh, the, the others and or we modify the waiver so that we can get the kind of results we intend to get from those uh, from those waivers? You know, and I think that is the way in. In any environment, we have tasks we have to stimulate industry, to stimulate a particular sector that the government may be interested in developing. So it is not out of place, but what is most critical is for us to track the impact. And also looking at the uh, the road infrastructure scheme that the FRS also spoke about, you know, uh, as part of their receipts, you know, is, is one of the good policy, you know, take up a road, develop it, and then we give you the tax waiver. You know, you can see the development. So more of such schemes- And it can to, stimulate economic the, uh, activities. Activities, you know, more of such waivers are the kind of waivers that we should be looking uh, at going forward. All right, thank you so much. Mr. Emmanuel Onosomi, uh, lead partner with Cardinal Professional Services, for sharing your thoughts with us this thank morning. Thank you very much, Jenny. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. Bye.